here we will demonstrate uh, how to send a signal from one uh, part of the system to another or from one system to another system and uh, the signal uh, uh, we mean something which will trigger another behavior on another side right so it's not necessarily electrical signals more like message uh, but uh, in uh, SysML, and this is done uh, using the signal element, uh, which doesn't really limit uh, capabilities to model messages, uh, uh, but it's uh, used to model uh, modern electrical signals. It's used to, to transfer some data or trigger something uh, in another behavior on another site and same behavior. So uh, for that purpose, we, we created a block definition diagram here with a couple of blocks. Uh, they are under the same context, system context, and we have external controller, we have system, we have system B. So system has pressure property, and this pressure property we want to update from external controller. And uh, uh, also we want to trigger behavior of the system from external controller. So we will uh, send signals, and those signals will have the properties in order to transfer the data to the uh, uh, pressure to the system. So we will see how that uh, can be done, how we can send signal from one block to another, and also how can we transfer the properties to the from uh, one block to another as parameters of the signal, as properties of the signal. So um, here we also see that we have satisfied relation from the value property of the block to the requirement to say that this pressure shall be less than uh, 200. Uh, uh, but this is additional thing uh, which helps us to validate the model during execution. Now, uh, uh, for the communication, I need an internal block diagram so that I created in system context. Here we see internal block diagram. This internal block diagram pretty much has uh, one must thing to have is the connector between those ports. So I'm using proxy ports because proxy ports doesn't need to have its own behavior. They can just be transparent with the logical ports. And uh, that helps me to, to just use the port to, to identify where the signal should go. So here we see that uh, I've created connector between uh, controller and system. That's like natural thing to do in order to have the ability to communicate them. And... Uh, Next thing, I could model a controller could, which would send the signal. So, but maybe before that, um, I will show the system behavior. So system behavior here is in state machine. The state machine is inside of the system block. And it is very simple state machine on and off. And on on, I turn on and off, I turn off, right? But in on, there is also behavior which runs at this inactivity. So we will talk about this later, right? Now, um, here, when we go to the controller, controller has uh, activity diagram to control the system. So here it starts from initial uh, initial node. We go uh, to the value property specification, value specification, and we input this number as the parameter to the signal. So here you see how that is done. So it's very actually simple. Uh, the signal has the uh, property and I can delete this property I can delete actually everything here so let's delete this one and let's delete this one so in order to send signal I just can drag the signal here and I see that signal on will be sent with send signal action right automatically it is created now to send signal somewhere outside the block I need to specify which port will be used to do this and for my controller system controller here we see external controller it has only one port from which uh, it reach anything outside. So I will use this port uh, for on port property. So this uh, helps me to send the signal out through this port and then whatever, whenever it is connected, it will go and reach that target. Now, because the signal has the, and we see like on via a port, right? Now, because the signal has parameter, the prop, uh, we see this, um, we see this uh, p prop has property. We see this p uh, pin input pin. So here to this pin, we can connect uh, uh, the value. Uh, how signal will get this uh, value for the p uh, property? So the if we want just input some static value, so we can use uh, 
any action value specification value specification action and this gives gives us ability to input something so for example five or maybe you know ten and then uh, we connect output to input here and now uh, I will model that this is done first and then next I go here and then from here I go here but no I didn't even don't need this one right yes so that's how it goes And here is merge that we would be able to come to this cycle again. So here we send on signal, then wait 10 seconds, we send off signal, when wait 10 seconds, we use time, wait time event, then we wait 10 seconds, we send stop signal. Stop signal will trigger not state machine, but that behavior which will run. And then uh, wait five seconds, we send off signal. All those things are not needed, they just uh, help us to have more advanced situation here. Uh, those uh, off and uh, stop signals, they don't have any properties, so that's why we don't see anything uh, anything here under them and they don't have input pins. Now, uh, one way I will execute this, I need to execute uh, uh, the top block in order that uh, both blocks would start. And uh, this should be the block which I will run, right? And then all blocks will start and all behaviors will execute, right? So now uh, here, what I have here in the state machine, I have uh, activity. So this activity actually uh, will be responsible not only to to um, to do something, but like uh, to have this uh, pressure to update, but also to get the parameter property from the signal which is received so on signal when we are in off state on signal is received and we switch to on state right at that moment we need to catch that property to do something with that property so for that reason we created a activity run and this activity run has this input parameter which knows what to do with it, right? So it gets it here as a P input, and then by name it can uh, manipulate with that uh, variable in the opaque action. So the, here is that opaque action, which has ability to run any code. So here we see this input with, from activity parameter node. We have this input, and then we manipulate, and then uh, result goes as the interesting here. Also, you see that the result. Uh, goes as a pressure out, right? And then uh, we compare on the in the guards, but this is, doesn't exist statically anywhere in the model, this name of the variable. So it's a runtime variable where we compare based on that pin name, we get this runtime variable, we compare on the flows. And if the pressure is less than 100, we go here. If more than 100, we go here. We cycle here. If less than 100, we cycle, go here. And uh, here, what happens? This is like how to model uh, pretty much uh, loop, uh, uh, which uh, exit is uh, sent accept event uh, action, uh, which waits for the signal. So here we loop until the stop signal comes. Right. So this is fork, which allows us to to activate this accept event action at first cycle and next cycle it is just cycled back but here it stops and waits for the for the stop signal so when we send stop signal this one will exit out and when we drag and drop on this state we get this uh, initial behavior here created on the state and here we need another activity parameter node we, we will catch the signal p it goes here as a parameter here we have this as a parameter node so that's it so now we can uh, can use this execution and we will get the signal during execution and then it will update the pressure property okay it will update the pressure property so p will be that value 10 it will come here 
so it will add to the pressure and add the additional 10, right? So pressure at the beginning, uh, what is the pressure at the beginning? Pressure at the beginning is 100. Okay, so now I will execute this model and we will see what happens. I can come here. I have this simulation configuration created, so I can uh, run in this config. We'll go back to my view where I see everything what I have in the model. And we'll run this. They have also some user interface to track the pressure modeled. And we see here that uh, it is signal triggered. Now we get off signal, so it switches to off state. And I could slow down, right, because now it's very fast. I could slow down. Stop signal, and you see it didn't affect it anything because stop signal is uh, affecting only this behavior, but this behavior is not running right now. Now off signal, again, it will not affect anything, right? And then we'll start again. Switch back to the input, and we will send that signal. And I could actually stop at this moment uh, when we send the signal. Oh, unfortunately, it was too late. I would see the value here, what value goes through this port. Oh, I can do this also here. So, for example, let's navigate here. can go here, go here, here. And I move mouse over and see the 10 goes here. 10 gum C here. Now I can double click and I can continue. Let's continue. And we see that 10 came here. See the 10. And I can track like that uh, the, the debugging uh, uh, need uh, if I want to understand behavior or want to debug that behavior. It's not everything comes to know perfectly at the first iteration of the model. Okay, so off signal was sent and it disconnected, uh, switched to off state again. And I can control from here also. I can send those signals from here without uh, this controller. So, for example, you can send at any moment uh, on signal. You see? Signal went in. But when I send from here, right, so the default value of the signal goes here, property goes here as a 2. Now, what if, uh, so based on this connector, the signal finds the target, right? Not Now, what if I want to reconnect something here? So uh, I can uh, just take uh, this uh, and show here another system what I have here, because I have two of them, right? So I have this one and this one. And then uh, I will show this port of the system. Display port. And I will reconnect this connector. And this system has the state machine. This is another state machine. Okay. When we execute it, uh, actually lost, lo lo lose the focus. Oh, and they see this the behavior didn't execute it. There should be reason for that. So, for example, could be that um, this behavior is not used as classifier behavior. So, if it is not used as a classifier behavior on this block, it means that it is not running at the beginning of the execution. And that actually affects everything, right? Uh, when it is not running, it doesn't really react to the signals if the, even if the signal comes here, right? So, to solve this problem, I just need to... Uh, restart this execution. So let's go here. Let's stop. And now because I already assigned this as a classifier behavior, I can run it here. And now it will start reacting. We see that now the signal actually affects this one. Actually, again, I can slow down. Now, if I will uh, reconnect to this one, it starts updating the state machine. So let's do this. Connect here. 
unfortunately we'll send now a stop signal it will not affect anything here but but I will see that it goes here now off signal again it will not affect anything but on signal next time it will affect it will it is listening for on signal here Now let's see that it will affect this one. Yes. And I could uh, record all that execution into state uh, into sequence diagram. Create sequence diagram. You see from here from variable panel I can select the sequence diagram, and that gives me an overview who what was the communication over the execution. I select scenario of that communication. So here we see that uh, controller control system right it sends off signal but it's system one right under control send stop signal now it will send something else and now if i want to switch to another system i can switch that i can take this one and switch here yeah so i did that so now you will see that uh, this next signal will reach another system so let's wait here So we see that another system got this signal, and that got recorded into sequence diagram. So we dynamically updated this uh, uh, connectivity topology of this uh, uh, system. And we see not only that signal is sent, but also that uh, parameter P, P property with 10 value is sent, right? So the sequence diagram records property changes, states, changes, uh, send signal actions. And, Okay, so that's, that was the uh, overview of the interaction of the systems through interfaces as the proxy ports and uh, how to send a signal to trigger behavior on another block and how to transfer some data through that signal as a property values.